training for ice climbing can be a, a challenge for lots of people. To be good at ice climbing you need to be able to stay really relaxed and be really efficient in your movement and it's really hard to, to do that without climbing lots and lots of pitches of real ice climbs through the season. Indoor ice balls can allow you to practice those basic techniques and you can also train your endurance if you're a little bit creative. The first aspect of movement on the ice to think about is your general body position. The best position to be in is your feet roughly at the same level, and your hips tight in against the wall and your back arched. When you have your back arched and you're leaning back, it allows you to have a bit of space to actually swing the tool and it also allows you to see the terrain ahead really well. Move the tool well behind your head and the early part of the swing accelerates the tool um, and then you follow it with a, a flick of the wrist that accentuates that acceleration and gives the, the tool its penetration into the ice. In reasonable ice with good technique you'll get a lot of first time placements but if you don't it's better to just take the tool out and replace it again rather than move off a wobbly placement. You can verify that the tool placement is good by giving it a firm downward tug with your body weight. It's really important to do that um, not just to prevent a tool ripping through and you falling off, um, but it also allows you to feel relaxed and confident that all your placements are secure from the first move all the way to the belay. When you place one tool above the other, it's time to move your feet. Beginners often keep their hips close to the wall, making it hard to see the best footholds and nearly impossible to kick your front points directly into the ice. Instead, hang straight arm from your tool and stick your bum out to move your feet up. This makes it much easier to choose your foot placements and keep the heels down. You should take advantage of natural footholds in the ice and keeping very slightly dropped heels maintains the best penetration for your front points and moving your feet around on the foothold as you would in rock climbing is likely to make your feet pop off on the ice. If you feel a bit of a pump coming on, don't be afraid to take a moment to relax. Maybe swap your hands on the tool and you can use that time to reassess your strategy for the next section of the pitch. To place screws, it's much easier to place them at hip level than at shoulder height. Of course, the character of the ice that you're climbing might dictate that you have to break that rule, but if you do, the best thing you can have is really sharp ice screws. If you climb in Scotland a lot on thin ice, you might end up bottoming out your screws on rock a lot, and then they get blunt and they're basically useless. And if your ice screws need sharpened, and, you know, do it by yourself if you know how to do it or use a sharpening service which you'll find online. Make a few half turns in the ice to get the teeth of the ice screw to bite and then gently start to screw the ice screw into the ice. And once it's actually taken a bite, finishing the screw is really easy. Indoor ice walls like this aren't actually great places for physical training for ice climbing because inevitably they're just far too short and they don't replicate climbing multiple pitches on a big north face and carrying all of your extra gear. But if you're inventive, you can make the most out of them. Um, climbing up and down, not returning to the ground, and maybe placing screws as you go will help you to get a good endurance burn. Ice climbers struggle on routes they ought to be able to climb well by making a handful of common mistakes. And the most important of those is just failure to stay relaxed. When it comes to the psychological aspects of ice climbing, I think everyone has their own individual thought processes um, and strategies that work well for them. I've always found that my starting place is just trying to relax and breathe deeply um, and use as relaxed a grip as possible on my ice tools is where I start from. And I use that moment to reassess my strategy for the next few moves and the next few meters um, and then I feel better to continue. But I also feel that if I was unhappy to continue, I could just climb back down. And down climbing is something you should practice as well. Um, the time that you really need to do it on a nice climb, you need to do it right first time. So practicing it on an indoor wall like this is a really good opportunity. The second mistake is having blunt tools and blunt crampons. Make sure that they're really sharp and if they're not, don't be surprised that ice climbing would feel hard and insecure. When beginners feel insecure in the ice, they often try to compensate for that by leaning in and backwinging their, their arms um, to get more weight on their feet. But actually the effect is the opposite and the bending your elbows makes you have to hold on harder to your tools and it makes it much harder to get a good swing with your tools. Moving off placements you're not happy with is nearly always a bad idea. Even if you've got little option but to use a wobbly hook or a thin placement, 
Some testing it should give you the ability to move with confidence. If you commit to a bad placement, it's almost guaranteed to make you tense up and use far more energy, even if it doesn't rip on you. Practicing all these skills on an indoor wall will mean that when you come to your real ice claims, you won't be too task saturated to focus on all the other tactics and psychological skills that you need to become a good leader on ice.